be me. Modified Pathfinder campaign. Took some stuff from 3.5 and other versions to stick in there. DM loves large scale campaigns. Let's us do anything we can come up with as long as it is within reason and our power. Party wants to make the world a better place. Most of them, Human Paladin, Elven Ranger, Dwarven Defender, some super tanky fighter, Elven Druid, all good people. Then there was Astitian. Astitian was a necromancer, a blend of a pale master and dread true necromancer to make the class more viable since alone they have issues and it made the abilities match the fluff. A grey necromancer as we called it. Was in a bit of an odd spot when it came to alignment. Somewhere between neutral evil and pure neutral. Nothing like the rest of our free spirited band of do-gooders. Wasn't particularly malicious. Was just very devoted to his craft. All things died in time. There was a balance to uphold in that regard and it was his task to do so. Naturally none of the party liked him. But they knew that they could trust him due to how painfully honest he was. The kind of honest that would tell a child straight to their face that they were going to die. Party was also extremely uncomfortable with his presence. It didn't help that he was lich loved with a grafted arm and as such practically dead. Wasn't flashy or prideful. He wore modest grey robes with some armor over top if needed. No weapons other than his magic and his hands. Almost no sense of self preservation. Death was just another part of life to him and he would face this as necessary. Extended this train of thought to the rest of the party as well. He would do what he could to keep them alive with temporary health and undead to shield them. But once they started dying it was improper for him to intervene. Paladin and the druid hated his partially non-functional guts. DM is great. Plays off of this whenever he gets a chance. Start out clearing dungeons as usual. Party extremely uncomfortable with the fact that one of his arms is skeletal and can kill things with a touch. Even more so when they find out one of those things each day can become a zombie that he can indefinitely control. More on top of that when they find out the ones he raises normally he strips of all their flesh and crams the skeletons into bags of holding so he doesn't need waste spells controlling them. Party is well aware that he is slowly creating an army of undead mostly due to the fact that he is making no effort to hide it. When the party needs a distraction or more damage he gives a skeleton a bag. Has it run out somewhere and dump it to make 8 to 10 more skeletons come out. Doesn't control those ones but as long as the enemy is closer than the party it doesn't matter. Party slowly making their way north due to rumors of a city in distress that needs help. As Tushin stores all his undead in one of the dungeons and prepares a portal to it as an emergency escape or source of reinforcements. Stuck with a necromancer who can rip open a portal to a room with a couple hundred undead at a moment's notice. Their paranoia knows no bounds. Make it to a large city that has recently been attacked by, you guessed it, hordes of undead. Districts are still closed off. People are still paranoid and scared. Thrilled to see the party, not so much to see Astitian. Sent into an area that had been breached to clear it out and search for survivors, if any. Go over the makeshift barricade, undead shambling all over the streets and buildings. Some were clearly the attacking force. Armored skeletons that were sent over the walls, others were obviously the turned corpses of the civilians. Deciding on a plan on how to get through it all, they could fight them but if they got surrounded there would be issues. Halfway through the planning the druid asks where Astitian went. Paladin spots him walking down the street, politely walking around the undead that didn't care about him being among them. Party grumps and continue planning as he calmly nudges the skeletons into a small group. Almost as if he was helping an older person cross the street. Casts command undead. Gets them in order. Form a line stretching across the street as he asked the party to get off the barrier. The main threat now dealt with. Paladin and dwarf grump passed without a word. Taking down zombies in hand to hand without much issue as the ranger and druid fire arrows. As Tushin and the skeletons simply retrieve bodies and respectfully lay them down beside the buildings. After sweeping a few streets the ranger heard soft crying from one of the buildings. Absolutely packed with zombies. They heard it too and started swarming. Once more Astitian simply walked through the horde, politely moving them aside as if he was going through a crowd at a fair. After he made his way through he slipped through the barricaded door, locking it shut behind him as he disappeared. Party waited outside as the crying stopped. But after a few minutes of the mage not returning they decided that something awful happened and they needed to kill the necromancer. 
Zombies were of little threat to the high level party, but there was certainly no shortage of them and it took time to work through them all. When they finally reached the upstairs bedroom the paladin kicked down the door, ready to bash Astish and Skull in for performing some horrid ritual on a survivor. Instead they found him sitting on the floor with a small injured girl in his arms, quietly whispering her lullabies. Even the paladin could see she wasn't going to make it. As Tishin ignored their questions as he stayed with her, singing until her eyes closed and didn't open again. Druid took the high ground and demanded to know what had happened. As Tishin explained she had got injured by a zombie, told her that she wasn't going to make it. Asked if she wanted it to be over quickly, she said no, too scared, promised to stay with her until it was over instead. Jaws hit the floor, pick her up and walk away from the party. Set her body on her bed and cover it in her sheets like a shroud. DM passed a note to me to change his alignment to neutral. Ranger had tears in her eyes. Snapped her neck in front of the entire party to make sure she wouldn't rise. Including the ranger who was crying about how beautiful what he just did was. DM took the note back. Ranger doesn't like them anymore. Clear out the district. No survivors beyond the one Astachian found. Civilians are extremely against the fact that there is now a necromancer inside the city with a couple dozen armored skeletons. Too terrified to do anything. Guards have PTSD and won't even try. Astishan is officially in charge of clearing out infested areas since they undead don't even see him. Paley is assigned to keep an eye on him since the city doesn't trust him. Paley is looking for excuses to smite Astishan into a pile of dust. Astishan doesn't notice. Keeps doing his work. Slowly but surely the dynamic duo are clearing out the city while the rest of the party is out searching for where the undead all came from. Civilians get little comfort as the skeletons bring bodies out of the lost districts and bury them all day every day. Paley has his magical Mormon underwear in a twist because Astachian doesn't kill any of the armored skeletons. Just bags them up or portals them off somewhere. Re-kills and buries all the zombies though which is going completely over Paley's head. As the last district is getting cleaned out the other half of the party returns. Apparently a massive death cult had been disguised as adventurers and clearing out bandit groups in dungeons. Been gathering bodies up and resurrecting them. And leashed them on the city all at once. Party instantly breaks down and start discussing whether Astachian is in the cult or not. Paley makes sure to point out that Astachian is in fact an evil necromancer with a giant horde of undead on hand. Wants him dead. Ranger brings up the little girl which she is significantly less salty about now. Thinks he's okay. Druid thinks he's an abomination that is the exact opposite of everything she stands for. Wants him dead. Dwarf makes the amazing observation that has gone over the rest of the party's heads for the past few sessions. As Tishan has never raised something that hasn't tried to kill innocent people. And only keeps the bodies of those who have. All the bodies in that dungeon are monsters and murderers. All the decent people he's given full burials. He's not trying to destroy or conquer. He's just keeping the status quo and needs to deal with evil magic to do so. Votes in favor of the necromancer. Party is tied. Astachian refuses to vote for or against himself. DM passes a note. Change to pure neutral. Weeks pass. Party has been helping the town recover. Citizens are okay with the skeletons that patrol the town and protect the graveyard. Astachian has started marking their armor with white handprints to tell them apart. Astachian has been using them to clean up the graves and give people proper burials. Taking care of crime too. Nobody asks where the bandits disappear to. Locals don't want to kill the necromancer for once. Party getting ready to move on since things are under control. Can't have that though. One morning a scout comes barreling into town. Turns out a neighboring lord wants to use the recent undead issue as a good opportunity to expand his borders. Next morning there is an army camped outside. Town is panicking. Outnumbered by a good margin and nowhere to run. Paley and dwarf start organizing construction on the walls. Ranger and druid summoning trees and animals to come help from the nearby woods. As Tushin meets up with the army and town guard to have a discussion. Next morning everyone is on the walls. Ranger and Dwarf making Lord of the Rings jokes. Astachian and a full company of skeletons are at the gates. Ladders hit the walls and the ram starts to not so politely knock on the door. Walls are chaos. Players are doing all they can to hold the line. Somebody opens the gate and ram gets set aside as the army charges in. 
Skeletons are getting slowly pushed back. The units on the walls are retreating back to the gatehouse. Use the skeletons as a rear guard to allow the army and guards to fall back up the street. All the side roads are blocked off with makeshift walls. It's a one-way road to the keep. Enemy army is pouring into the city. Cut down the last of the skeletons in charge after our forces. Men have nowhere to run. Form one big shield wall and get ready to die protecting the keep. As Tushin is nowhere to be seen, the enemy army forms their own shield wall in the street, forming up for the last push. The boom of the gate slamming shut echo through the town. Some of the invaders turn in time to notice some of the fallen starting to shake. The party notices that all of the rising guards have white handprints on their armor. Every single one was near the walls and gate, none of them fell back with the others. As Tushin appears atop the gatehouse as the bodies of a hundred guards upon the walls and at the gate start to rise, the handprints on their armor glowing as they let out a horrid cry. A fallen captain stumbles out of the gatehouse, a bloody banner with a handprint and white text clutched in his hands. Even in death, I shall protect. They shamble behind the enemy force and form a small infantry block, not nearly enough to be a threat. The invading army laughs at a pathetic attempt of a pincer that the town mustered, the sacrifice of the guards merely an annoyance. Then the portal open, hundreds of zombies and skeletons pour out of the rift. With a roar the fallen guards charged alongside the horde, slam into the flank, the living charge and hit them head on. Invading army stuck between a bunch of pissed off defenders and a swarm of undead that doesn't end. Pretty soon groups start to surrender running to the defenders to get away from the horde that doesn't care. Undead guards form another shield wall facing the horde with the invaders to their backs. Living guards run over and form up with them. Start pushing. Slowly pushing back the swarm of skeletons and zombies. Some of the invaders join in to help push. Horde getting stuffed back into the portal. The undead guards follow them in, holding back the mindless undead. As the living back away the undead turn to face them spreading their arms wide to keep the tide back. As the portal closes, they smile. Two weeks later, invading army was sent home, allowed to take their dead with them. Dwarf figured out what happened. As Tushin had talked to the guards and asked if any of them would volunteer to be brought back when they died. Most said no but one full company agreed. They were brought back willingly so their souls stayed behind, sacrificed their rest in the afterlife to defend their families. Group get ready to leave. Get a parade and a feast in their honor before they go. As Tushin doesn't attend, he doesn't eat and isn't exactly a fan of parties. Stays back at the crypts. Once he's sure he's the only one there he opens a new portal. As he steps through he sees the corpses of the guards working. Building what appears to be a barracks from the mining areas of the dungeon. Mindless undead were corralled into another section that could be opened or closed if needed. Fallen captain sees him and roars. The rest of the gourds dropping their work and running over. Swarm together for a moment, then gather their gear and organize. Form into parade lines and stand at attention behind the captain. He points towards what will become the platform for the permanent portal back to the crypt in town. There's a statue. It's Astrician with 144 small shields decorating the stand, one for each of the volunteers. He smiles softly as he turns and goes through the portal, the newly named Sleepless Watch Company following him back home. As he passed the statue he read the words carved at its base. Our service, eternal. Our sacrifice, infinite. Our regrets, absent. Be me. Modified Pathfinder campaign. Same group as before. Still Astrician. DM has split undead into undead and deathless to make it easier to track Astrician's raised. Undead are the corpses forcefully brought back via dark magic. Deathless are bodies brought back by volunteers who retain their minds since their soul is still bound but their bodies are still mostly dead. Basically intelligent undead that aren't bound under anyone's control. Effectively makes raising deathless a neutral action since it's dark magic but not forcing it on anyone. On the flip side whoever is being raised needs to be aware of it and willing to return. Makes it significantly harder to raise deathless since most people don't want to be brought back into a corpse. The deathless are not undead so they fall under regular leadership instead of undead leadership. More importantly they are intelligent all the way down the chain so they may bring their own men and friends. This means Astrician can raise a leadership army and an undead leadership army at the same time as well as those controlled by the touch and hit this. 
the undead deathless army is now nearing 1000 members directly under his leadership not counting the uncontrolled horde and bags of skeletons. Party has gotten used to having an army on demand and enjoy having it since it allows us to go into field battles without needing a city backing us. Need to miss a few games due to other plans but the party wants to keep going. Talk to the DM to work something out that is a challenge to the party while also still including Astition. Brilliant strikes and we both get neutral evil grins. Begin the plot. Party is traveling east to deal with bands of raiders that are pillaging the country. Basically giant hordes of not vikings. Astition has been abnormally motivated and has busied himself hunting down the mages in their ranks. Taking their bones and covering them in runes before storing them away in his dungeon. Party is more than a little disturbed by these actions since they are uncharacteristically dark. The giant horde of undead was proven to have a purpose but there was no positive to this. Nobody wants to ask him either. They ignore it and continue tracking down warbands. Encounter one outside a large town. Hundreds of men burning and pillaging the town. Party sits down to strategize. Decide that two companies of deathless should be enough support. Rip open the portal and march out the endless crusade in the scorched suns. Enemies in life, rival vanguard troops in death, constantly trying to outdo each other to prove their superiority since even death won't help them get along. Make sure they have their helmets, visors, turbans, masks on before we send each around a flank. Most towns aren't huge fans of being rescued by what they see as undead. Party naturally goes straight down the middle. Clearing the main road as we work our way towards the town square. Slaying hill giants and casters and raiders with player classes. Raise the fallen giants and send them out of town as we keep pushing forward. Need the utility but can't use them here without scaring the locals. Finally get to the town square and link up with both deathless companies. Sons got there first so naturally they are reminding the crusade of their inferiority. Find the Jarl and let the defender go one on one with him in a duel. Barely pulls out a win against the Jarl. Rest of the raiders are captured or try to run. Crusaders and sons are using it as a chance to see who has better archers. Drag the captured into the square and hand them over to the townspeople. Except for one. Right before the villagers reach their conquered attackers Astation calmly walks into the middle of the tied up men. Singles out a man covered in bones and totems. Grabs him by the head and energy drains him to death in front of the entire town. Paley loses his shit over what he just did. Druid loses her shit when Astition ignores him and drags the corpse through the portal with a deathless. Whole party loses their shit when he closes the portal behind him. Party starts to book it back to the city where they know there is a permanent portal in the barracks for the sleepless watch. Paley and Druid are giving the I told you so speech to the defender and ranger. A few days later they reach the city but nobody there seems to have noticed anything wrong. Party doesn't like that. Get to the barracks and start searching. All the watch are gone. All their equipment is gone too. Party finds their way down to the catacombs and search until they find the portal. Relieved that it's still open. Prepare all the anti-undead they can and get ready to storm in. Paley goes through first. Rest of the party waits a few seconds before piling in after him. Run straight into his back once they get through. Paley didn't move once he got to the other side. Couldn't believe what he saw. Dungeon was empty. Massive tracks leading straight north. Party haul ass after it. Can't miss the trail of dead and dying plants and thousands of footprints. Terrain starts getting snowy as they keep going north into raider territory. Trail suddenly makes a turn and spreads out. Run straight through the woods to the remains of a wooden raider town. Buildings are smashed and burned. No bodies. Trail keeps heading north. Party stays on it. Fighting off monsters and wildlife but no raiders anywhere in sight. Over the next few days the pattern repeats. The horse shifts direction and goes through a ruined town or village. No corpse is left behind. After almost two weeks they finally catch up with the horde. They find it on an open snow plain in battle formation against a massive horde of marauders. The local chiefs had all united to push back the horde that was plowing through their land. Astation and the Deathless were in rank formation with each company flying their banners. There were 12 companies as well as the undead giants behind them throwing boulders. The tribes were easily triple that number and were well aware of it. The marauders charged as the party debated what side to join the battle on. Before they could come to a decision the defender, always the most observant, pointed out that the horde was missing. 
the party turned just in time to watch as all the snow around the charging tribesmen started to move. Thousands upon thousands of undead claw their way out of the snow. Marauders instantly surrounded with more coming out by their feet. Deathless companies all level their weapons and charge into the melee. Party votes to sit out on this one. Battle is over quickly as the tribes are overrun from the start and Astashin just walks through with AoE abilities that kill them and heal his army. Deathless form a square perimeter as soon as it's over while the undead mill around inside. Party sets up camp to wait out whatever is going on. Paladin knows something is wrong with the land but he isn't sure what. Take shift sleeping all night. Astashin's army doesn't move until exactly 24 hours after the battle. All at once the corpses of the raiders stand. Deathless turn and start to march while keeping the square formation to hold the rogue undead in. Get the horde moving north again. No bodies left behind. Paladin identified the taint as cursed earth. Whatever Astashin was doing it was important enough that he was willing to permanently curse all land within a mile of the battlefield. Party follows the army for another day before they stop. All of them were being directed at a northern city at the base of a mountain. The horde wastes no time going for the gates. Giants are flinging bags of holding full of skeletons over the walls while the deathless stand guard around them. Party vote 3 1 to stop Astashin before he wipes out an entire city even if they are murderous raiders. Dorf still has his back and believes all this is for a good reason. Prepare to charge through a weak points in his army but are surprised when the deathless on that flank simply get out of their way. Party ignore it and ride straight through to the necromancer in the middle of the deathless formation. Find Astashin standing and watching the mindless undead swarm through the city. He's a far cry from when they last saw him. Covered head to toe in armor made of bones inscribed with black runes. Four skeletal arms are grafted to his back giving him a look like a spider. Each is lazily outstretched holding a black sapphire. Paladin has been OCD researching necromancy since Astashin left and knows they must be soulbound. Party is throwing an absolute shit fit and demanding an explanation. Astashin slowly looks over to them as calm as always. Repaying a promise to some old friends. Goes back to watching the carnage. Party roll up and the fight begins. Astashin isn't built for solo fighting but he's no slouch and some of the rogue undead are nearby to help. Everyone but the Dorf panic when the Deathless all start to charge. Dorf isn't surprised when they all run straight past everyone towards the city. Party trying to fight the necromancer and zombie giants without hitting any of the Deathless that they've gotten to know. Astashin is fighting extremely defensively, mostly healing and throwing out just enough damage to stop from getting ganged up on. Paley destroys the soulbound sapphires one by one. Each releases the soul of a raider spillcaster and weakens him a bit. After a while the party finally brings him down but by then the city is completely fallen. Party deciding what to do when Astashin's cohort Barumat comes back from the city with a company. Paley isn't sure since the party had almost never seen him. Respectfully bows to the party and without a word opens another portal. Massive column of deathless start to make their way out. Almost all of them are in civilian clothing. All bore wounds from axes and spears. Many of them give their thanks to the company and the party as they pass into the city. The last out of the portal are the remnants of a small village. They were all more skeletal than the rest, had obviously been gone for far longer. All went to the city. In less than a week the city had been repaired and many of the homes had drastically changed in style. Party learned their towns had all been destroyed by the raiders and most of them were cut down during those raids. During their travels Astashin had Baruma traveling the land and raising all the towns that had been destroyed by the raiders. Had promised them a second chance and a new home where they would be able to go to rest when they were ready. Party has the feels and agree to attend Astashin's funeral the next day. The entire city is in attendance at the town square in the morning. The sleepless watch were the color guard for the procession. Once it reached the center of town it stopped and set the lidless coffin in the middle of the main road. Two of the lifeless from the old village came forward and knelt by the coffin as it started to glow with holy energy. All the party but the defender are confused. Dorf was the only one in the party who bothered talking to Astashin enough to know what his ring familiar Buhone was capable of. For a moment Astashin shuddered then slowly pulled himself upright. One of the old deathless leapt forward and hugged him as he returned its embrace. For the first time the party had ever seen his face wasn't cold and emotionless. His voice was different. He sounded alive. He was crying. It's okay mom. 
I'm alright. So I've recently moved Ikbadia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. So I am an affiliate of NordVPN. If you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute NordVPN is offering 75% off a 3 year plan. I have been using Nor myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardia and use coupon code nickbeardia for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Protective services. It's time to stop.